Thank you, Lord. We're blessed to be in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you in this house in Jesus' name. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, praise when I'm dying. Everything that Hallelujah. breathes Hallelujah. praises Hallelujah. the Lord. Yes. 
about? Should be praising the Lord. Hallelujah. That's right. Animals praise the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Humans, all humans should be praising the Lord. Amen. We're thankful in the house today. We're always thankful in the house. Even though things don't always go the way we want it to go, we're still thankful in the house. Even though you're, you may not be happy with some things, you still praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But just because we may not be happy doesn't mean the Lord doesn't deserve the praise. The Lord always deserves the praise. Come on. And really, when it all boils down to it, we're so blessed. Amen. We're so blessed, Lord, and we're so blessed because you bless us. We love you, Lord. Forgive us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can praise you and honor you and worship you with a clean heart this morning. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time. His spirit washed in his blood and what he did for me on Calvary more than enough I trust in God my Savior the one who will never Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I know the author of two. Has ordered my steps. So this is my story. This is my song. Raising my risen King and Savior all the day long. So I'll trust in God, my Savior, the one. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never
trust in that's why I trust in God my Savior the one who will never fail he will never fail I trust in God my Savior in their healing, Lord God. We pray for those who are struggling, Lord. We pray for those throughout this world that are having such a hard time, so much tragedy, so much calamity, Lord. Please help them. Help them to draw close to you, Lord, so that you can draw close to them. We pray for those with broken hearts, Lord, that you would blanket them with your peace Lord for we know that you are the one who mends the broken heart so we thank you Lord in this house for your goodness for your grace for Lord for loving us even when so many times we are unlovable thank you Lord thank you Lord for your church worldwide lifting up the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the precious blood that you shed for each and every one of us. We thank you for every leader, for every labor in this church and ministry. We thank you for our church family. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the associate pastors and their families. We thank you, Lord, for the worship pastor, the youth pastor, and their families. We thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. We thank you, Lord, for the missionary in the house and for his family. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing in the lives of your children. We pray for every soldier at war at home, our veterans, their families. 
And we thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing, the things that we do not see, and all the things that we do, Lord. Again, Jesus, we thank you for the blood that you shed for us. Because of you, we have salvation, healing, deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place, Spirit of the living God. Overtake your servant. Move through him. Speak through him, Lord God. And we thank you for the word that will go out today and not return void, but will accomplish what you have set forth for it to do. We thank you for this time, Lord, of communion. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that we will do it often in remembrance of you. Have your way in this place. Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name, all of God's kids say amen. Good morning. Good morning. You know, every battle is victorious to the Lord. And we got to understand that God is always, always victorious. Whenever he shows up, you automatically, the enemy automatically loses. There's no opportunity he has to gain any threshold or any power over us powerful things to do is worship and pray without it we lose our stability in anything you do whether it's uh you know a physical workout they always talk about the core everything is about the core where the strength comes from in christ we need to know he's our core that's where our strength comes from that's where everything comes from answering the call is more than just a simple thing that we do it's something we have to learn to live when we receive Christ that's acceptance that's not surrender when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior that's an acceptance we accept we receive but that's not surrender surrender comes afterwards that's the hard part because we all have a an internal will that we like to do things a certain way but God has ways of doing things that has a greater outcome for all of us so being born again is Power. that to me that's one of the most beautiful gifts I've ever ever thought to receive but surrender now that's another topic and so answering the call is more than salvation it's surrender and I want to let you know we have no excuses by the age group that we are in God doesn't care about age he cares about surrender giving our hearts surrendering our thoughts to him and guess what part of that is helping each other so if you're only helping your family, there might be a little hiccup along the way. Because God calls us to help each other, all of us, encouraging words, whatever it might be, lending a hand, you know? You see a homeless person out on the road, and you might say, oh, I'm just going to ignore that and just not pay attention. But if you just take time, sometimes you find out all they need is water. It's hot outside. But if we only concern ourselves with our own thoughts, we're not going to be able to share God's love and his way of doing things. We might not be able to change the world, but we can help one person. And I'm encouraged by just doing that. You know? Gave uh, William, he's a wonderful young man out there. He's homeless, you know, but he's working on his salvation. Had the privilege of water baptizing him uh, when he just showed up for our water baptism that day. But long story short, yesterday I had the kids and it was a wonderful thing to share an ice cream with him. Amen. Yeah, the Thank freezer had an ice cream, so we gave him an ice cream. But, just that thought alone he said oh you really believe what, what you do basically see so just an action just helping somebody sometimes and that's what answer the call means mm -hmm. but using your gifts my gifts to help others Amen. your gifts are not for you no. God gave us according to the word spiritual gifts and they're not for you that would be selfish to think it's for us it's to share with others a gift, when we get a gift, God gave Jesus Christ the greatest gift ever. That's a gift. He gave that gift. And I'm so thankful that he did or I wouldn't be standing here right now. So right now we're going to have communion. And why I'm sharing all this is when we have communion, we've got to connect with God. That's what it's all about. Please, gentlemen, and receive the healing that God has. There's not only a spiritual power, there's a physical healing that takes place. And we're thankful for that. Amen? God is good. He's always been good. He's always going to be good. He never takes a break. When you look up the definition in Webster's Dictionary for good, it's God. Amen. You look up God is good. Amen. So God defines good. Good does not define God. God defines that. God defines love. Amen. 
Love doesn't define God. God has so many powerful things that He shares with us. And we got to realize that He defines Himself by sharing that love, sharing how good He is, sharing how He's always there for us. And communion is part of that. When Jesus went ahead and engaged with the disciples and talking to them, He was able to share with them such a wonderful gift, letting them know that every time we break bread, every time we do this, we remember Him. We understand that He has a purpose for us. And today I pray that God would minister to you that beyond salvation, it's called submission. And submitting to God, boy, I tell you, that's probably one of the most difficult things we go through in life. But God is good. Amen? Amen. we got to smile more too. <laughs> Smiling is contagious just like grumpiness is. So we got to be real careful. Amen. Be thankful to the Lord. Amen. You walk into a room with grumpy people, it's like you can just sway with the sway, you know. Just go right into that. But we got to be thankful. Walk into a room like that, you just smile. Amen. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so blessed to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. You see, one thing I love about little children, they just get excited. You don't even have to tell them to get excited. What happens when we get older? It's like we have to be encouraged to get excited. But then they're like, just excited. They just come in the room and they're just excited about everything. So I'm just blessed for the young people. Thank you. Let's take a moment before our sister reads just to give God some time to release your heart. If there's anything bothering you, release that. If there's anyone bothering you, release them. And therefore we can clear our conscience and our soul. Amen? Amen. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let us take and eat together. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take and drink together. For all for as often as you as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you for blessing us, healing us. We receive our healing today from our head to our toe. We call every organ in our body to line up with the word of God. Your word has already brought confession, but we confess your word today and make a proclamation that we are healed by the power of the blood of Jesus. By your stripes, we are already healed. We thank you, Lord, that our body lines up with the word of God. Pain must leave. Numbness must leave. Our blood is purified by the DNA of Christ. We thank you, Lord, as we confess today that Jesus Christ is not only Lord of our life, He is Savior of our body. He is the healer. He is the great physician. God, Jehovah Rapha, the healer of all areas of our life. We proclaim this from our mental state to our soul, to our spirit, to our physical body. Our feet are powered. Our hands are powered. We have a powerful mind in Christ. We thank you, Lord, this morning. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. We got to proclaim that word. That word is so powerful. We don't, don't read it. We proclaim it. God is so good to us. He is good. This word we're about to read today is a very common scripture, very mm, known by many. And in the power of this scripture, I'm going to show you that it dealt with a wedding. And in my Bible, it's written all in red. That means Christ is sharing this. And a lot of times, he's going to share parables. And for the Pharisees, it was like a slap in the face. 
because they had to understand that they were not receiving what Christ was saying they were not receiving what God had ordained for them to understand so today we're going to look at a party ever been to a party I've been to a party this is a wedding of course and sometimes you know you send out invitations people don't show up and this happened and so this this wonderful king sent out an invitation for his son his son's wedding and everybody was going wow no so I'm going to show you because I'm not going to read through the whole chapter we're just going to do powerpoints in it but that's what really took place thank you God bless you that's what really took place the king sent out his servants and his servants went and invited people and some said I'm too busy can't go some said afterwards ah that's not that important to me and then on the third God bless you then on the third it said that they got so irritated that they not only mistreated them they killed them so when you kill a messenger you're trying to kill the message and this is what Satan has been doing for hundreds and thousands of years thousands of years gone by trying to kill that message of the gospel of Jesus Christ trying to take that message down but it will not be taken down there's always a remnant. There's always somebody going to share the gospel. Somebody going to share the good news. But look, see, when they do that, they actually try to kill the message. The good news. All there is out there is bad news. You ever pay attention? If you feel deprived in the world, you ain't tapping into the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not deprived. I'm alive. And I don't need what the world has to offer me. I live in the world. But it says we're not part of it. So we have to watch how we participate in our daily activities in our mental way of thinking how many know the mind is a strong power it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and other translations says strength so that tells me my mind has some strength it has a conviction through the soul to give me information to help me because sometimes we try to outthink what the word says we don't have to outthink it you don't even got to process it we don't have to analyze the word the word directs us. It gives us hope. It gives us strength. So let's read together and then we'll break it down a little bit. Matthew twenty-two fourteen, 14. Amplified. And we've, um, you know, we've seen it before and heard it before. So let's read it together. For many are called, invited, summoned, but few are chosen. Thank you, Father, for this word. We bless you as you break it down so that we can get a better understanding. We honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I like it because it says invited and summoned. See, when you get the call to salvation, you're invited. You're summoned. You know, when you get a summons, you got to go to court sometimes, right? Hopefully never for you all. But you get a summons, right? You're summoned. You're brought forth. Summoned means you're being called upon to be at a place in a particular time. That's a summons. So you're summoned. God says, I invite you. But many refuse it. Many turn away from the salvation call of the gospel. And that's what this scripture is pertaining to. But after you're saved, God calls you to serve. It's in the word. So you don't just get saved and say, well, no, you know, I don't serve because I don't. Listen, God's not concerned with excuses. He's not concerned with all the different things we come up with to say because he knows everything. God doesn't give me everything. I shared this before. He gives me a plan, but he doesn't give me the details. Why? Because if you have the details, you'll alter it. Been proven over and over and over again. So I've been training in that area with God and not testing it, but Him testing me to make sure that I follow His instructions. You see, if He gave you the outcome, you would alter it. I might alter it. Because we may not like that outcome. Or we may not like how it sits. Or we want to protect. I'll tell you what. Without God, there is no protection. This world is already unfiltered and bleeding out all its evil and wickedness. It's everywhere. It's not to be negative. Just pay attention. But the Word says it. The Word says it. It says this is going to happen. Second Timothy in 3, it says that these are perilous times. But you read the breakdown in it. It says these are evil days that have been exposed to us now. It was here. We just haven't been paying attention. La, 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 la. Oh, it doesn't affect me. Let me tell you what honor does. Honor, if you're an honorable person and somebody hurts the person you love, you take care of that person also in the manners of saying, that's not right. You just don't go, well, they didn't do anything to me. Amen. That's true. Honor will cause you to go a step beyond and even jeopardize how people look at you. 
God is a God of honor. There is only one God. And He is honorable. It even says to honor your parents. Honor your giving. Everything is based on honor when it comes to Jehovah. He is Jehovah Saba. God, my warrior. Our warrior, but it's isolated to an individual. Meaning that when you call upon God, every morning, once I learn that, every morning I say, you are Jehovah Saba, my warrior. Which means I trust God to fight for me. If you want to be dull, that's not God. The church is not dull because people are dull. But people are the church. So how does that figure? I'm excited with God. It's hard. Every day you get challenges. Every day you get challenges. God doesn't, listen, He doesn't punish us. We wouldn't be able to withstand the punishment. He corrects us. He gives us new direction. He helps us. Our soul, amen. Give Him some praise. It's always good to praise the Lord. We just do that today. That's good. Amen. So our soul should not be seared like Ahi. You know, Ahi, you know, you sear it on the outside, nice and raw on the inside. Shouldn't be like that. Can't get in there. Our, our soul has to be open, has to work with conviction. Conviction is when you know it's wrong and you actually don't do it. But if you only know it's wrong and do it, your conviction isn't very strong. So this scripture, based on this scripture, is talking about salvation. It's talking about receiving Christ as our personal Savior. And that's why it says you're invited, you're summoned. Many receive the invitation to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but very few are chosen because you choose not to receive it. You become dull in our minds and, our, and not receiving the things that God has for us. A great invitation was given, like I shared in the wedding in chapter 22. That's what it speaks of. And they paid no attention to it. They brushed it off. And people brush it off, brush it off, brush it off. Pretty soon, it's not going to have an effect on you because you don't let it affect you. But the invitation of salvation is for everybody. I'm going to show you how that works because in my Bible it's written in red and Jesus says that after everybody turned it down and they actually killed the servants listen what it says it says the king sent his army and destroyed them all mm -hmm. you go read that word in that chapter it's powerful he destroyed them all then he told his servants go on the roadway invite the people on the highways and the byways and it says in the word bad and good yeah. that's, right. that's why it's wonderful to read the chapter for one scripture because sometimes we may misinterpret the scripture yeah. or the content of what it's saying. So he went and invited all these people, bad or good. But wait a minute, there was one person that was not dressed for the ceremony. Probably came in his construction gear. <laughs> Maybe he was hard working that day. Maybe he didn't know, you know, what to do. But he knew that you don't go to a wedding in clothes that are not or the apparel that is not acceptable. So the king looked and said, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know. What seems to be wrong? You know what that is in the Greek? Not admittance of fault. Amazing how the Greek has a better way to explain it. So this gentleman is saying, well, nothing wrong. I'm just going to come like I am. What did Jesus say? He immediately went into the power. You get cast out into utter darkness where gnashing of teeth is. Whoa, that's pretty heavy stuff, I think. But this whole thing is about an invitation. It's all about. So you might say, well, I accepted the invitation. I'm so blessed, but are you submitting now? Are you surrendering to God? Because see, salvation is an invitation of acceptance. Surrendering comes after that. Yeah. That's the hard part. I'm going to tell you, it's difficult. I have to surrender every day. Most of them might say, I don't want to hear that. It doesn't apply to me. You don't want to stand before Jesus as a born-again Christian and have Him say, why didn't you heed the call? Why didn't you answer the call? Everybody's called to do something. You know that, right? Maybe not the same thing. Moses, Moses, Moses must have had some in areas there where he went, Oh, how come you call me now? I'm 80 years old now. That's your problem. That's what God would have said, I believe. That's your problem. You decided to kill one runaway. Hide out in Midian and marry and have two children and having a good life. Now I burn the bush and bring you up. Isn't it amazing how God doesn't care how old we are? It's no excuses, you know. Heaven doesn't have, and I said, an excuse counter. It doesn't. You can't get up there and go, excuse me, could I have the excuse counter gone before I come in? I have some excuses I want to make and I have a couple of complaints. I want to go to the other department. 
Whoever's at that gate, angel or not, Peter, whoever it is, is going to go, there is no complaint department here. There's no excuses. Yeah. You might be in the wrong line. Oh, we don't want to go in the wrong line. <laughs> don't do that. That's not a good place to be. So salvation is a gift that is offered to us. And we accept the gift. Then we move into submission. Surrender is the word they use. So, but they paid no attention. They went off in their act. And they actually mistreated and killed the servants, Matthew 22, 5 and 6. Jesus is referring to anyone who hears the gospel and refuses to accept the truth of it. Each person must decide how they will respond, will accept or reject the invitation. No one will be forced, it says in the word. No one will be forced. God offers everything. But we have to surrender everything. Word. You can get mad at me. That's okay. I'm all right with that. Surrender is hard. See, I was blessed to hear words decades ago when God gave me a word at the other sanctuary that we had in the early 90s or later 90s, actually. And he said, submit or be defeated. So it was easy for me. You might not like that word. I liked it. You know why? Not, not too much of a choice. Just see, submit, defeat, submit, defeat. I take submit. But it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It means I challenge myself to the difficulties every day and face it. But you will be defeated. Without God, you're going, to, you're going to challenge the devil. You're going to get defeated. I don't challenge Satan. I come against him in the name of Jesus by the blood of Christ. Jude 9 says that Michael fought against the devil for the body of Moses. But all he said is, the Lord rebuked thee. He didn't use his own power, his own strength, which he already kicked him out of heaven anyway. He was already ex made on the ooks made. Yep, that's right. He was out of there. It was Michael that did it with his angels. God could have just flicked his finger and shoot him across the hemispheres. Amen. He could have sent him to Pluto, but he sent him here. <laughs> Pluto would have been good. That's far away. Yeah. You know? Or Uranus. <laughs> it's your mind that's playing tricks on you when everybody says that, you know. There's a reason they call that planet that. Anyway, so one would reject the other would deny the other one would refuse or make excuses the first thing they did was make excuses so that's something we should learn today the first thing sometimes that happens is when we have an invitation to actually serve God we make excuses second is they brushed it off and said they have other things to do in other words their value system was corrupted by their own activities not what God had for them remember it's a king calling on them it's amazing how Jesus gives parables because people don't listen to the straight word. A lot of these, these Pharisees, they knew the word of God. They were educated. So Jesus had to teach them in a way that they would understand. And then they get more mad. You ever get rebuked and get more mad? Well, nobody says anything, of course. But. When God straightens out things, it's a good thing to be straightened out by God. He's just helping us so that He can set us up for victory. That's what He does. That man that had the wrong clothes didn't want to admit. In the Greek it says, not admitted to his faults. That's what it says, not admitted. I never saw it that way in a way of perception. You know, I just thought he just wanted to go in the clothes he had, or maybe he was a poor person. No, remember, remember, the king invited everybody off the streets. Bad or good, it says in the translation I read bad or good they were invited but it says you should know better when you go to a wedding than to wear your lawnmower clothes <laughs> believe me you don't want me to come to your party with my lawnmower clothes <laughs> I'm telling you because that's like the ugly junky clothes because it's going to get ruined sooner or later we got to show up with respect and honor yeah. how did my pastor hope I teach me he's in heaven now he called me to preach on a Sunday so I come to church with my best clothes because I'm going to preach. Uh huh. So he tells me I'm not going to preach that day. He said, some of us come to church. He didn't say it to me. He said, some of us come to church and we wear our best clothes when we, because we're going to preach. Oh. Oh. But they're not going to preach. Oh. But at the end of service, he goes, save your message, brother. I know it's a good message. That was to humble me. And was I upset? Heck yeah. I have a message to preach here. 
<laughs> but was I corrected and understood? Yes. I should wear my best clothes all the time when I come to the house of God. Not just because I want to preach or present myself. So I was trained that way because I had a stubborn way of thinking. Not any of you, of course. But that's why, and it worked for me. It did help me. And I, you know, I'm not going to go, oh, I don't like you. I hate you. No. I went, oh boy, that's right. I should be wearing my best clothes all the time. If I'm going to wear it just to preach, just because people are going to look at me because I'm going to preach. Isn't that the way it should be all the time? Amen. For everything we do with the Lord. So when we, the, when we accept the calling of Jesus Christ, first thing we need to do is repent. Amen. Right? Because we repent. Jesus comes into my heart. Right? John 3, 3, 3, 5. We become born again. And that's an important part. That means to surrender our old ways. And I got news for you, young people. There ain't no such thing as old school. There's God's school in your school. Amen. You choose. I was trained by God's school. I don't, I don't call it old school. I used to call it old school. It, 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 God, listen, God has no age, so you can't call Don't call him old. He might not like that. It's God's school. Amen. It's the way God trains. It's the way he helps. And when he trains us, he protects us. We're not filtered by the elements of the world. We're filtered through the word of God. And that brings power. That brings correction. That brings healing. It brings deliverance. If, amen. If we don't walk in deliverance, if we don't walk in the power that He's already given us, then we're going to resort to our old way of thinking. That's old school. Our old way of thinking. And God doesn't want that. He has so much for us. You see, hey, the government can be corrupt. People can be corrupt. God is not corrupt. So I serve the one that is not corrupt. So I can walk in a corrupted world going, <laughs> I'm not corrupt. Because I serve an uncorrupted God. Amen. I can love on people even when they don't. Listen, a lot of people, i got to admit, don't deserve to be loved. But they should be loved. Amen. Which means they didn't earn anything because they might have mistreated you. Maybe they said something wrong. Whatever the case. But one thing I know for sure, when we become born again and we surrender, we love. That's right. It's part of the policy unwritten but written in the word you might not have signed that contract but when you became born again you created a covenant and that covenant develops that in us so we must surrender two things love God, love people everybody says I love God but the, the book of 1 John says that if you say you love God but you don't like your, you don't love your brother or your sister then you don't love God God is love First John 4 8. He's love. You can't be born again without having love. You have rough days. I don't believe there's a bad day upon the earth. I believe we have hard days. I get some hard days. But see, to say there's a bad day, meaning God doesn't exist in my life at that day, He does. And God is always good. So whatever I'm going through, He already knows. I don't got to go tell Him what I'm going through. I ask Him what I'm supposed to do while I'm going through it. That's what I've learned over these decades. You go to God and go, oh God, you know, this is happening to me. God knows everything. He's like, I know. I see everything. Yeah. But you never thought that that might be a consequence? Hey. <laughs> oh, no. I thought the enemy was attacking. He don't got to attack when you do stupid things. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says, right? God is not mocked. That is shared the men. You got to keep that word in mind. Mock. God cannot be mocked. He will not be taken lightly or pushed aside. Whatever a person does, so does he reap word so you want to deny the word that's fine but you don't get the results of it that's a universal word you know what that means it doesn't matter if you saved or not it applies to everybody it's a principle action Mike Murdoch would say these are principles in the Bible in Proverbs throughout the New Testament if we live by a powerful principle of God we will not reap the benefits of the world we'll reap the benefits of heaven I don't know about you but the diamonds are here but it was created up there the gold is here, but it was created up there. i never been on a street of gold. I don't know where they have that on earth. But it says in heaven they got it. And it says it's so pure, it's transparent. What does that even mean? How is gold transparent? It always looked like gold to me. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just sharing my heart, you know. But I want to imagine. Whoa, that's better than what we got. Rubies came from up there. Pure. Amen. I mean, I read in the Bible that there's, there's, there's jewels. I don't even know what they are. I've never even heard of him before. Yeah. Because he created all things. 
You either believe it or you don't. I'm not here to convince you. I'm just proclaiming the things that I know. God is so good to us. He's so good. My prayer today is I know you're all saved as I look at you and I'm believing and those watching pray that you get saved if you're not, meaning receiving Christ as your personal Savior. But I pray also you'll learn to serve. Amen. Surrender your life. Amen. I love when we go like this. Oh, I surrender all. Not just this part. I surrender all, but leave me alone on this one over here. You know, we can't sing like that, but we should maybe if that's the case. Because the song says, I surrender all. All means nothing excluded. Yeah. Just defining it a little bit. It doesn't mean we have to be perfect. It means we got to be real. Amen. I surrender all. Every morning I wake up. Lord, thank you. Bless you. Breathe into my lungs that I might breathe clearly. That I might walk uprightly. I pray a lot of different things. Because we know that God hears prayer. And He answers prayer. Amen? Amen. So, difficult. It means, listen what difficult means. It means letting go of my way of doing things. This is biblical. <laughs> oh. So the reason I'm having a difficult time in surrendering is because I don't want to release the way I do things. But I've been trained for many years. Yeah. How's that working for you? God does it so much better. His way is way better. I remember our spiritual dad was in heaven. I used to call him in L.A. And I said, Dad, I have this situation. And he always used to tell me, well, what did you decide? Dad, I would not insult you by calling you and having a decision already. Immediately goes, well, let's go to the Word, son. And we go to the Word. And he gives direction through the Word. He was pastoring 60 years. He's got some information for me. See, younger generations don't want to listen to the elders anymore. That's where you lose. You lose the stability, the experience, and the power of God through them that they have. I always tell the young people, I want to teach you to not make the mistakes I made so that you don't have to go through that. It's not that I'm trying to look for you to have an easy life. I'm looking to you to have a better life. Amen. A better life is through Christ and those things that I experience. If somebody shares with me their experience, I want to learn. I listen to children. Children can teach. Even their questions are powered. Sometimes they ask me a question, I go, let's go find it together because I don't know that answer. I'm telling you right now. Because they come up with some pretty good questions. I'm not the whiz kid, but I know who has knowledge of all things. So I'll ask him. Once we accept the call of salvation, next, according to the word, we are called to serve. Amen. Now you can deny that, but it's the truth. Now I don't want to be an usher. I'm not asking you to be an usher. But you got to come to the place where you ask God, how can I serve you? more efficiently Amen. more powerfully in this earth Thank you, Lord. you can be a passenger amen or you can be a puller which means God is looking for leaders got plenty of followers in the world but they're following the wrong person Jesus Christ is the person we should follow amen. Paul says you follow me as I follow him amen. don't be following me if I ain't following him so we have examples before us. I know that the mentors that I've had in my life, and most of them are in heaven, they were sent by God. So I would not insult my father by not believing what my mentors taught me. Amen. See, a lot of people don't. Oh, I don't like that mentor. I don't want him. I trust God. If I surrender, I say, I trust that you're bringing to my life those that I need, that I need to have balance. And they're all different. Yeah. And sometimes there was a struggle with some. Well, I had to be humbled. I had to watch myself. It doesn't make them correct at everything. It makes everything proper to learn as God gives it to you. And I've had a brother tell me, and I told him once, he left the church, we had a talk, just a short talk on the phone. And I said, the difference between me and you, brother, is I believe the mentors that God sent me. You don't anymore. That's a downfall because you'll repeat the cycle. Word. So I trust God. You cannot pick your parents. And they didn't pick you. Some of them are like, oh my, I wish I picked somebody else. But you can't do that. It's just the way it is. It's the nature of God in, in creation. You know what I mean? The baby, I'm sure the baby doesn't come out of the mom and the mom goes, I don't want that one. Look like I'm going to be really naughty. Kolohe that one. Give me some, is there another one in another room? No. And as they get older, you can't trade them in for a recycle. 
You know, you got to live and learn. And some of the kids are going, who picked these parents for me? God did. <laughs> he knew who you were before you were conceived, according to the word. And myself also. Before you were formed. Yes. Jeremiah, before we were formed, he knows us. That's like, whoa. Yes. God is good. 1 Corinthians 7, 17, uh, English Standard Version says this. Only that each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him. I want you to get that word, assigned. God assigned the life to you. Amen. And then it says, to which God has called him or called you. This is my rule to all the churches. This is Paul, of course, speaking. How's that? I got a rule for y'all, he's saying. I got a rule for y'all. I love Paul because Paul will say, not the Lord, but me say it this. When you read that, I love that because he's setting you straight that he believes it's God, but he's letting you know it's him. Because I love people, the Lord led me to do this. The Lord said to do this. Man, it's amazing how you say to everybody else how the Lord did it, but you don't do it yourself. You're like a modern day Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I mean, you know, Pharisee. <laughs> Pharisee. <laughs> Never mind. It's like a bug with a Pharisee word in it. <laughs> yeah. No, y'all got it. First Peter 4.10 says this. God has given each of us, each of you, a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. You get benefited. My blessing is that I hear God. As long as I can continue to hear God, I'm going to be victorious. Because whatever he says, even if I don't understand it, I can't comprehend it, it's powered by his word. God doesn't ever deviate from his word. His word is his word. Amen. He is the word manifested in the flesh. Jesus came in. Yes. That's power. That's prophecy miracles right there. Amen. Even though people don't want to receive it, don't get mad at them. Amen. You get mad at them, they'll never receive Christ. Uh -huh. Oh, forget it then. Go to hell. How does that work? Now, we might not say it, but we think it sometimes. Because we're so angry <laughs> of how we're being treated. Oh, help me, Jesus. God is so good to us. Excuse me. So, there's another scripture, and this is my closing scripture. It's found in the same chapter, chapter 4 in 1 Peter, verse 7. This caught my attention in this translation because it woke me up to a rude awakening real quick. It says, the end of the world is coming soon. That's how it opens. This is before 410, which I just shared that each of us has been giving a gift in great variety, a spiritual gift from God to serve one another. And this is what God wants us to do. He doesn't want the churches to fight or argue or come against each other. He wants us to use our gifts to help one another and to grow and to encourage and to not discourage in faith, but to courage you know, bring courage to people by trusting God and helping them. But it says, the end of the world is coming soon. This is what it says in this translation. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Prayers are very important. Worship, pray. Worship, and we heard worship. Samuel gave a great message on Wednesday night on worship. I thought that was excellent. You can tell that he loves music, but I love what he said. You said something that caught my attention. You said, God used the love of music, my love for music, to bring me to worship. That is prophetically spoken. Amen. Using music, because I love music, and He'll bring you to worship. God, if you surrender, He'll use Arabashi. He'll use what you love to bring Him to something that He has for you, those spiritual gifts. So I know that, because that's real. When, when Sammy said that, I went, wow, that's revelatory to me. Yeah. That God used music because he loved, I know he loved music because he was like a music pounder from when he was a little guy. I remember him like, whoa, pounding it out, man. He did some wonderful presentations here, amen? But that music that he had was, was wonderful music, was worship, but it was more in the areas of God dealing to bring him closer and closer. And pretty soon, I'm a man, I'm going to see you on TV pretty soon. Yeah. No, I speak that into your life. You're going to see you on television. For, for, you're going to be, yeah, it's going to be wonderful, yeah. And not on America's Got Talent. You already got talent. I mean, he might. I don't know. You know, he might go that way. I don't know. But I'm not speaking that. I'm just saying I'm going to see you on TV. Believe it. I spoke into my own life and I said, I'm going to minister at a Catholic church. And, and I was in the garage and I'm sure people went, you lost your marbles already. You know, all of a sudden I get an invitation at St. Teresa's. And Kihei, I, go, I was scared. I was like, what? 
Then I said, I'm going to be on television. <laughs> I remember Pastor Bobby said, what? Because I'm in a garage. I'm a truck driver, right? Who's going to put me on television? I'm, I'm going to be on television. And I was invited to a live prayer meeting on Lassie Ministries. Live. They told me for, we, don't, we can't edit. Watch what you say. <laughs> okay, make me real nervous now. But, but you see, you're proclaiming things and speaking things right into your own life. You can do this. And it wasn't for me. It was for God's glory. It was for His way of doing things. And then you speak of what He wants you to speak. But I'm saying you got to speak the Word. Amen. Not the words of the world. The words of God. Amen. And that will bring forth. Amen. God's not threatening us by saying, the world's going to end. Y'all are going to die. He doesn't say that. No. I'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, He said, the world is coming to an end soon according to my Word. And I want you to get close to me so that you'll be able to look, not survive. You're overcomers. We're overcomers. Amen. And he has a greater plan. We're going to go to heaven and come back. That's even greater for me to even understand. And I don't mind admitting it. I can read it and go, wow, that's so wonderful. We're all going to come back. How are we going to do that? We're going to come back. Amen. We argue about silly things. We do. All of us. I include myself. You know, Paul says, avoid these foolish conversations. They lead to nothing. You know? Everybody wants to argue to make their point. You make no point at all. You know? It's true when we argue. I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. So I try to diffuse that in me, you know? Try to diffuse it and say, Lord, you know, I need help. God gave me a word yesterday. I was lawnmowering the yard after I do the kids. I was doing my chores outside. And he, he, I don't know why he does that when I lawnmower the yard or water the plants. He just, maybe because my attention is like, oh. You know, it doesn't take much, you know, to lumber the yard or water plants. You know. <laughs> but he said something to me. He said, why don't you stop helping and start doing, Rocky? I thought it's good to help. Well, helping is one thing. Doing is another. I realize that now. So you go from help to do. You go from save to serve. Mm -mm. S and S. Not sign in. I know y'all know that Simon. That's the frozen one, right? That one come in the refrigerator or whatever. Not frozen, maybe. So let's again. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest, be disciplined. It says in our prayers. Amen. And prayers work. They work, man. I am. I am just so. Whenever I'm in trouble, I go. Oh, I better go to prayer. I better go to prayer. I better go to prayer. I want to share something real quick. That a nightmare or a dream is not your spiritual battle. That's part of things that happen in your spiritual battle. When you're in spiritual warfare in your sleep, which I went through last night, I don't remember much, but I remember getting up at 2.35, sitting in the bed and looking at the clock, not knowing why I'm sitting up all of a sudden. But I didn't have a nightmare. I didn't remember anything, but I felt distant. And God uses that to get our attention. Well, my alarm finally went off a little bit later. I got up, I prayed, and then I sat up on the bed again because I felt distant. But see, we see it as a negative, but God wants us distant from the world so He can get our attention. Amen. I remember a smoke alarm that would not stop going off. Remember that? Even unplugged it. When it went off, I went, oh, shucks. No battery, no plug. Somebody trying to get my attention? Just to go, beep, beep, beep. Sound like a bird antagonizing me at night. God wants our attention, so we go to prayer. We come to Him. Because He knows things that we don't. Remember our pastor, Pastor Jerry, once shared how he fasted for a week or time of prayed, and his dad was missing in the Philippines. Am I correct? No? Longer than a week, but he fasted and prayed. But he didn't know why he was fasting. But he was fasting and praying, and his dad was missing in the Philippines, and they found him. But he had no idea at the time. So it's important that we hear God and listen. You could be helping someone you don't even know in your family. God is that good. He may not give you the details. He just gave you the plan. Pray fast. I'll take care of the details. Because if you got the details, we're like calling up. Hey, anybody know where he is? You seen him pictures? Anything? But, do, but yeah. Right? That's how we do things. Yeah. Did you put him on a telephone pole? Put pictures out there? God says, I know where he is. Yeah. But I want you to fast and pray. And I'll bring someone to find him. Yes. Better than any picture and telephone pole could do. Yeah. That's how good our God is. So good. That's how good He is. 
So today, we make a choice. And for those that are saved, then you'll take the second part. First is salvation power. That's what the gospel brings, the good news of the message. And the enemy ain't going to stop that message today. It's already gone out over the airwaves, over YouTube, and the places it's going to go. And I'm thankful for that because people can watch us all over the world now. Amen. And like me or not like me, but they're going to watch me. Amen. One or the other, it doesn't matter. They will get the word sooner. You know, some people, they watch you, but they don't like you. Like, oh, yeah. But they're watching, right? Yeah. They're hearing the word. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I know it's amazing. It's almost weird, but it does happen. But I thank the Lord. And so this morning, if that's you out there, if you're watching and you never asked Jesus into your life, I'd like to pray with you. In the house, I believe we all have Jesus in our heart, and that's the most important thing. That's a salvation invitation. And the King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords brings it out. So if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. Where you are, you can just raise it lightly. If you can't even do that, just repeat after me. If you can't, but you can hear, but you can't speak, even just bring it to thought. And just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. I receive you this day. And for all that you have done for me, I thank you. And I thank you that I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Where it doesn't stop there, I want to pray the second part, which is to serve. And we just pray, Lord Jesus, show me what I can do with you. Thank you. I am called to be saved. I am called to serve. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if that's you out there and you prayed this prayer and you don't have a Bible, we want to send you one. If you're in the area of Maui, Wailuku, Kaului, wherever it is, and you don't have a place to worship, come and check us out. You know, I remember, and I want to share this in closing, I remember going to a um, swear-in at Oahu and Pearl Harbor. Pastor Al was there uh, for Kainoa. And I remember something the captain said as they swore him in. He had a jacket, a military jacket, sitting on a rack right there in front of everybody. And he said, listen, he said, the military is like that jacket. You put it on. Get it to fit, you know. And if it doesn't fit real good, well, it's up to you if you can take it off, if you want to. But when you put it on, feel that fit. And I was like, wow, that's really good, you know, because I can think spiritually. So that's what I'm saying. Let Jesus just make you fit. And you'll never be sorry. You'll never be sorry. He's so good and so righteous. But I love what that captain said. You know, just try it on. Amen. You know, my pastor used to say, Pastor Lucky, I'm going to say who it was. He said, he used to say, hey, try Jesus. The devil will always take you back. <laughs> he used to always say that. I'm like, okay, so true, but it doesn't sound nice. But it's so true, you know. So this morning, we bless God for all of you out there. We thank God for everyone in here. If the Lord touches you to give an offering, you go to wordoftruthmaui.org. Just press the green button. Securely take you to where you got to go. We have over. and uh, Actually, Samuel was right. I always say over 20 outages, but Samuel is right. Close to 26 if you count all of them that we give. So you're, you said 26. I mean, that's correct. That's right. So it's really a wonderful thing to be part of a missions church that gives continually into a world that is hurting, that needs food. And I truly believe that no parent should ever watch their child starve. No parent should do that. So we thank God for all of you. Bless the Lord. Have a great day. Whether you're watching it at night, have a great evening. No matter what, you're going to be blessed all week. In Jesus' name, amen.